Hello and welcome to Herbwise Herbal. My name is Judita Zurek and I am a medical herbalist based in London. Today I would like to introduce you to one of my garden herbs. Uh, the name is Figwort, uh, Latin name Scrofraia nodosa. I still can't pronounce that correctly. <laughs> so, uh, Scrofularia nodosa. So, it grows uh, pretty much in the UK. I'm not sure about the US, uh, but it's a pretty good plant to have around. Um, so I haven't obviously used it yet. I'm, I'm, I've been waiting to make this video so I can do the tincture after. Uh, so hopefully in the next few days I will make a medicine out of it. Um, so yes, yeah, so this plant as you can see here, uh, it's a pretty big plant, nice leaves, serrate leaves, oblong, square stem. You can see the flowers, you can see the seeds. Um, I might find some flowers actually here. Yes, there they are. Very small flowers. Um, so you're probably wondering how can you use this plant and why it's so important. Um, so as the name suggests, scrofula was used to a disease. I mean, it still is pretty common uh, in some countries, not as much as it used to be, uh, but it's characterized by a lymph node swelling uh, around the throat area and it was caused by myobacterium tuberculosis, so TB. Um, and as you can imagine, in the Middle Ages, they didn't have any drugs, any medicine, so they had to resort to strange practices or taking herbs, one of those. So this herb was applied um, for that disease and used for that disease. Um, so as you can imagine, they were using it for, for lymph node swellings, for tonsillitis, for example, or, or any kind of uh, swelling abscesses in the tissue or gangrene. Uh, today, we pretty much also used for the same kind of type um, diseases uh, in the upper respiratory, but also we use it for any like lymph nodes, swellings in the breast, like nodular tissues or eczema psoriasis. Um, I have personally used it for eczema psoriasis only. So the main constituents of, of, she's taking <laughs> my hair. So the main constituents of figwort are iridoid glucosides. Um, we have harpagoside, harpagide, which are anti-inflammatory. Uh, these same compounds you can find in devil's claw, harpagophytum procumbens, uh, which is used mainly for osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, other compounds we have catalpol, if I remember correctly, and ocobin, which is antioxidant and catalpol has neuroprotective action. So it has been used, there's some research done with regards to dementia and Parkinson's disease. Um, so, but this is kind of new thing, so I'm not sure um, much, I don't know much information about it basically. Uh, other constituents are cardiac glycosides, so if you have any cardiovascular problems, like tachycardia, you should not consume this herb as it will exacerbate your symptoms. Obviously, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding or if you are a child, then you should not consume this herb as well as the maximum dosage is 2 to 4 mils, which is much lower than other herbs. Uh, what I mean 2 to 4 mil is a week. Um, other herbs usually have 30 to 40 mils. Uh, so as you can see, it's a very powerful herb to have. So coming back to making medicine out of it, I will be making a tincture, one in three extract. Um, possibly in the future I will make a video about it. Uh, basically one, it means one part of herb to three parts of liquid. Uh, I might do one in one because it's easier as well when you don't have to calculate anything. And the main parts of the herb that I'm going to be using is the leaves and the stem, so the aerial parts. I forgot to mention that the main iridoid glycosides you can find in the leaf, not to the root. Uh, some people use the root as well as a medicine, um, but I couldn't find anything about it, so uh, I'm gonna be using the leaf aerial parts, basically. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully it will work. <laughs> I will make a video, probably a follow-up, how did it look like. Um, so if you want to use the herb, my suggestion is to, well first, 
you have to know what you're using for but um, ask your local herbalist or GP first um, maybe in combination with other herbs uh, if you have anything like a swellings or, or, or tonsillitis or like stubborn flu or eczema or psoriasis because it's really good cleansing herbs um, it apparently cleanses via kidney uh, according to Chinese medicine not via liver so um, so yeah hope that was helpful um, and I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions then just give me a shout out on my FB page Earthwise Herbal UK um, posting comments is okay on YouTube but sometimes I can't reply because YouTube blocks with an error so you can't reply to comments um, or you can just visit my website which is the link below and I'm gonna speak to you soon bye